Hey guys, I'm Sam Crack, and I actually bought a car with a clean title. It has nothing mechanically wrong with it. It was never in an accident, a flood, or even run through an auction. In my opinion, this GT350R is perfect, but the typical buyer for one of these cars might debate that. When the Shelby GT350 was released, it was easily the best modern Shelby Mustang because it was an incredibly well-balanced pony car. But with a modest, by today's standard, 525 horsepower, speed freaks weren't too enthralled by its straight-line performance. So if the GT350 wasn't enough, well, Ford came out with this, the supercharged Shelby GT500 with 760 horsepower. And with a starting price tag of over $70,000, it's also one of the most expensive Mustangs ever produced. But right now, Omaze is giving you the chance to win one with shipping and taxes included, plus $20,000 cash when you visit omaze.com slash Sam Crack. The 2020 GT500 is the first Mustang with a dual clutch transmission, which sends it from zero to 60 in just 3.3 seconds. And it does the quarter mile in a little bit over 10 seconds. All out of the box. When you enter to win, you'll be supporting the Gas Monkey Foundation, who is committed to helping communities in Texas. To enter to win the most incredible Mustang ever produced, all you gotta do is head on over to omaze.com slash samcrack, or just click my link in the description box below. Remember, it comes with $20,000 cash in the back seat, and while you're at Omaze's site, you'll have the opportunity to support the amazing Gas Monkey Foundation. Now, I wanna wish each and every one of you good luck. But with the release of the GT500, as well as the beloved C8 Corvette, the market for the GT350 has dried up, making them an outstanding value. Every year, Ford produces a few thousand GT350s. Only about 10% of those, or hundreds of them, are ours, which has really anchored this car's resale value, since its limited production kind of makes it a collector's car but it didn't anchor this car's resale value. You see, this car cost about the same as a comparable GT350 because the original owner installed about $15,000 with the aftermarket modifications on it for track use. I did find that kind of strange because this car comes so track focused from the factory, but I'm not one to argue a good price. Let the collectors pay their additional $20,000 for a car that hasn't seen the track or has never been modified. The original owner enjoyed this car the way it was intended to be enjoyed and that's on a track. Now we're going to go through all the numbers here very shortly, but in case you don't know the difference between a 350 and a 350R, I'm just going to run through what you can expect to find in one of these cars, starting with the fact that there are no back seats. They've been removed for weight savings. This large spoiler was unique to the 350R, that is until an aftermarket company came out with an exact knockoff, and now you'll find one of these on every EcoBoost and GT Mustang. The springs come slightly stiffer for track purposes, but the most notable and expensive upgrade to the 350R are its carbon fiber wheels. They're made out of 100% carbon fiber. This car was one of two production cars to come from a factory with carbon fiber wheels, the other being a few million dollar Conan Seg, and if you had to replace one of these wheels at the Ford dealership, it would run you about $6,000. A used takeoff set of these wheels sells between ten dollars and $12,000. With all the money spent on aftermarket modifications, there's only one that's really visible by just looking at the exterior of the car. It's also one of the most expensive aftermarket modifications on this car. Can you see it? I'm gonna get a little bit closer here. If you'll notice, the rear brake caliper is painted red. On the GT350Rs, you got a red Brembo brake caliper. On the standard GT350s, you got a black Brembo brake caliper. If you notice the front brake, well, it's black, but it's not a Brembo at all. It's actually an AP Racing lightweight brake caliper and rotor set. The combination will reduce the unsprung weight of the car 29 pounds between the pair. But all this weight savings comes at a very hefty price. Just the front AP Racing brake set retails for $4,400. That's without any options. If you add on a set of brake pads, maybe a few pieces of hardware, you can eclipse five grand. Now, what does that translate to? Maybe a car that feels a little bit snappier around a turn, maybe a car that shaves uh, hundredths of a second off at the track, but when I'm driving it to my local supermarket to pick up the groceries, I don't think I'm gonna notice any difference. So, what I wanna do right now is rip this original set off and return it to stock. And one of the best things about this car is not only did it come with two sets of keys, it came with a trunk full of its original takeoff parts. Look at this box. There are red Brembo brake calipers. Underneath this bin are brake rotors. 
And of course the bin is just loaded with stuff. By removing all of its aftermarket modifications and bringing this car back to stock, we'll be able to return the value in as a collector's car. At the same time, selling off all of these performance parts to people who can actually use them, lowering our cost basis so low, because this again was the cheapest example out on the market, period. It's gonna cost less than a comparable GT350 and potentially less than a Mustang GT. Upon first glance of removing the calipers out of the box, the faces of them are in excellent condition. The paint isn't damaged and you can clearly still see the Brembo emblem. But I did notice at the top of them, someone really manhandled them whenever they removed them from the car. They're all scratched up. The paint finish has been completely diminished on the top there. Luckily, you won't see that when they're installed on the car, but while the calipers are off the car, it will be a lot easier to repair. And if I remember, I think I actually have some red caliper paint up here somewhere. Ah, I see right there. This will work perfect. So let's go ahead and fix these up really quick. Oh yeah, it's a big wheel, but it is much lighter than any other metal wheel that I've ever taken off a car. And there is the money. Now another cool thing about the 350R, the front wheel is so wide. Look, this is a 19 by 11 inch wheel. And look what else we found. We have a nail. So good thing we found that. We'll be able to get it taken care of. Well, we've got the wheel off the car to work on our brakes. Now, this is a really, really nice brake setup, but like I said, I don't think I'm gonna be able to tell a difference in my use for the car, and this is kind of a uh, unconventional style brake caliper. What I'm seeing here is that it fastens on to some sort of bracket with these two nuts, and then the bracket itself bolts off. But before we even attempt to do any of that, I wanna drain this side fluid so we don't have a mess going on when we take the caliper off. Now to make our lives a lot easier, we'll be using a pneumatic brake bleeder. This is really simple, and it's $35 at the Bargain Tool Store. You take the line here, you put it on the bleeder valve, which is located on this caliper. On the back, there's actually two of them, one up top, one on the bottom. And we're gonna open that bleeder valve, and when we do, we're just gonna hit the trigger right here. It's gonna suck all of the fluid that's out of the line, and it's gonna take a lot of it out of the reservoir and go into this container right here. A pneumatic bleeder uses the vacuum to push the fluid through the system so you don't have any air in it when you're all done. And then, of course, we'll top everything off with fresh fluid. Okay, our bleeder should be open, and you should see fluid come through here. The brakes came off the Shelby just like they would any other car and I want to just show you the size difference. If you take a look at the AP Racing aftermarket brake caliper here, you can see it is substantially smaller than the Brembo. It is still a six piston caliper and I'd imagine that the braking performance is about the same between the two, but this is a lot smaller of a caliper. That's where your weight savings is. This rotor definitely feels a little bit skinnier. Uh, it's still a directional vented rotor, uh, but this is what is hopefully going to give us a nice rebate on the Mustang. Now, remember I just said it's a directional rotor, so we wanna make sure when we're putting these on that we get the right rotor on. So I put both rotors on the hub here, and you could see that the cooling fins on the inside of this rotor are angled kind of that way, and then these cooling fins are angled this way towards the back of the car. You wanna make sure they're angled towards the back of the car. So we're gonna take this top rotor off. That one will go on our driver's side and our reassembly should be pretty straightforward.
finished with the brakes. I spun the car around. It did stop and the pedal feel is great, uh, but of course we'll take it on a test drive a little bit later. We have another modification located here in the uh, passenger side corner of the trunk that we are gonna revert back to stock and I think this is gonna make a huge difference in the car. And well, the stock part is right on top in our bin here. This is the factory mag ride controller. Swapping the suspension controller took five minutes maybe. This part is $1,400 new. I think I'll be able to get about a grand for it in the secondhand market, and I believe it's gonna make one of the most transformative differences in how this car drives. This company makes a lot of different modules for many various makes, and they get pretty good reviews. But my time spent with it on the GT350R has not been the greatest. But then again, I've never driven on the stock module. So let's take this car out for a ride. That way I can compare in real time and tell you the difference between the two. Wow. You know, it's gonna sound really cliche, but they don't make sports cars quite like this anymore. This is truly a really special car. Uh, the most special Mustang I've ever driven. And the majority of the miles that I've driven this car has been the way it was delivered to me with all of these aftermarket modifications on it. And just in that pull, I can tell you, I like the car better with the factory suspension module. Shelby Mustangs come with magnetic ride dampers and specifically in the GT350s there's two options normal or sport aka stiff or stiffer that was one of the only complaints you ever heard about this car from automotive journalists is that it drove just really darn stiff if you were taking on a regular cruise now that's the way Ford tuned this specific platform even though in theory these mag ride dampers have a wide range of damping they could be really soft. So this aftermarket suspension controller was supposed to unlock the full potential of these dampers. Make them soft when you're just cruising along like I am right now, and make them super sporty. If you drop the car in a gear and you, in my time with the car, with this aftermarket module, it's felt floaty, bouncy. Uh, it almost feels like an old Lincoln Town car in a lot of places almost too soft even when i'm really accelerating you feel the nose lift up something that's been pretty much eliminated since returning the suspension controller back to factory and when we get home i'm going to put the car up in the air we're going to get underneath and uh you're going to be able to check out a modification that is another super expensive one that you probably heard on this drive and it's one that i would really like to return to stock but i can't because i'm missing a few of the parts to do that uh, stock conversion I know you guys have figured it out. This car has a full Cooks exhaust system. It's not just these mufflers. The mid pipes have what they call their green cats and even their long tube headers. And if you look, that's a really, really nice piece down there. There's plenty of people that would kill to have this set up on their car. Now this entire exhaust set costs $4,639 brand new. I think used it could fetch close to three grand if you sell it all together. And frankly, it's a really, really nice, high quality exhaust system. So you probably think, why are you even wasting your time thinking about removing it? You lucked out, you got a nice exhaust. Well, it's missing two things. Number one, the sound. When the GT350R came out, it was arguably the best sounding American Muscle V8 to ever be produced. Here, take a listen for yourself. <laughs> And while I was pleasantly surprised when I received the car that this wasn't just some super loud, noisy exhaust, uh, it's missing something. Here, take a listen. Any car that comes from the factory with an exhaust button is usually pretty special. See when I do it, it pops up there on the dash. You can go normal 
or sport. The only issue is there's no electric cutouts in the cook system, so it doesn't make any difference in the tone. To regain the use of those electronic exhaust valves, which I think is such a cool feature, we'd have to reinstall our factory muffler pipes. And the good news is the car came with those. The bad news is it came with no other exhaust components. Now, I was able to track down a set of headers for just a couple hundred bucks, the factory ones, of course, uh, but the mid pipes is what we're missing here. And a set of mid pipes from the dealership is $900 a piece. And if you find them used, people just want to get them out of their garage. You probably pay 100 or 200 bucks for them. Problem is not a lot of people are removing the exhaust from these cars, so they're pretty rare to come by secondhand. But eventually a set will come up and I will snag them. But the big question here is, do you go through all the labor to remove those long tube headers that do give you a performance gain on the car? Let me know what you guys would do in the comment section below. The job is very labor intensive. It has to be done on a lift. I wouldn't even want to consider doing it on a jack and jack stands. But those long tubes are what have the major value out of the entire exhaust system. If you're able to remove the entire system, I think you could recoup maybe 2,500 to three grand out of it. Uh, but just the rear muffler section, you probably get six to 800 bucks out of it. Between the lightweight brakes, the suspension module, and the full exhaust, the previous owner spent over $10,000 in just those three modifications and it wasn't finished there. There's a handful of other, well, smaller modifications that still add up to several thousand dollars more spent on the 350R, but ones that I think are pretty useful, like these Ford Performance oil separators. There's one right here, one over there. Those are $175 a piece. This aftermarket blue cone intake filter, the stock ones are made out of paper and need replacing quickly, so I like that you can reuse this. There are caster camber plates it's about 250 dollars for a set of them and frankly it's not worth even removing them as long as the car stays in alignment it won't make much of a difference in how the car works uh, we've got this tow hook i have no clue how much something like this costs but uh, i'm gonna get rid of it real quick well it didn't look terrible i'm just hoping i never have to use this while i own the car now my favorite add-on is the paint protection film that spans the entire front end of the car, full fender, full bumper, hood, all the way to the back of the doors and halfway up the pillar. It has kept the paint condition of this car immaculate. Mind you, it's not that old of a car, but there is no noticeable blemishes anywhere here and the rest of the modifications can be found in the interior remember this car comes from the factory with a rear seat delete no seats in the back of a 350r so we installed this racing harness bar and back here are your restraints and the last part that I'm aware of that was swapped out on this car is right here. And it's not just the shift knob. This is an aftermarket GT350 ball shifter, but there's also a short throw shifter in here. Just look how short it is to get to first. There's second, here's fourth, third. It's really, really tight, almost like artificially tight. I don't love the way it feels. I'd really like to see what the factory one is like. Usually they're a little bit more forgiving, a little bit longer throw. And I think that kind of like jamming it from first to second, that's a lot of fun. So we'll figure that out when we're working on the exhaust because the aftermarket shifter install actually takes place from underneath the car. Now let's run through all the numbers real quick. I paid $50,000 for the Shelby out the door. It's a 2017 model year and it has about 13,000 miles on it. When these cars came out, they retail for about 75,000, but for the first few years, you couldn't buy them without paying some sort of dealer markup. Most markups made the car between the high $80,000 range and near $100,000. And I remember reading an article that justified the dealer markup and said, car's still a bargain at $100,000, and that's because it competes in the same class as the Porsche GT3 RS, which is a car that costs $230,000 new. So just considering we paid $50,000 for this car for what you're getting, I don't think you could build this capable of a track car for that sort of money, but that's neither here nor there. The market dictates the value. And if you look at what a comparable car, a 2017 with similar miles retails for used, well, they're closer to $60,000, so really high 50s really low 60s so 50 for this cart was just a super solid price then of course we've got the modifications and just the couple that we took off today i think i can recoup four thousand dollars lowering the price of this car to about forty six thousand dollars and then if we're able to remove that entire exhaust if i can source those mid pipes we could lower the car down into the low forty thousand dollar range and it makes it an 
outstanding bargain at that point. Whether we end up doing that with the exhaust or finding the parts we need, I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but I am thrilled, again, with this car, with the purchase price, and if I decide to sell it, I think right now, as it sits, I could ask in the mid-50s for it very easily. Now, $50,000 is a great chunk of money to spend, and I know you might decide to spend it differently, so let me know if you think this is a good deal, an average deal, or what you would have spent $50,000 on in the comments section below. If you're not already following me on Instagram, where I've been posting pictures of the GT350R and our next Italian car project, go right here. Just click the link in the description box below. And I gotta thank each and every one of you for watching today. I'll catch you very soon.